So the Dallas Mavericks are sitting at a 6-7 and seven record in the West, and this is partially because of Luka's weird start in the first few games, and also because they just got Porzingis back. So they'll probably be fine in the long run, but I think you want this team to be a little bit more than fine. In my predictions video, I had the Mavs at the 7th seed, just because I'm not really sure about the talent around Luka outside of KP. I mean, I just got done watching the Raptors absolutely manhandle the Mavs on defense and Tim Hardaway Jr. just went 0 for 12. The Raptors were pulling out a box and one for some parts of the game, and it had the Mavericks offense looking really, really ugly. Just for a quick explanation of the box and one, the main goal is to get the ball out of one player's hand, and in this case it was obviously Luka. It very clearly worked too, considering he only had 11 shot attempts in the game. One other thing about the box and one is that it's only really effective when the offense runs mainly through one player, and it doesn't work against good shooting teams. It challenges other players to attack the middle and make catch and shoot threes. That being said, the Mavs happen to have a really bad shooting night tonight, shooting 25% from three, and their other perimeter scorer in Hardaway Jr. managed to go 0 for 12, like I said earlier. So maybe this is an overreaction, but I don't really think so. Hardaway has been good this season, but we all know he's been pretty inconsistent in his career and probably shouldn't be your second best perimeter scorer if you're a championship team. I mean, you've got Trey Burke, he was good tonight if you're Dallas, but while he is good at times, he's more suited for a bench role, so obviously I think you need someone else to put next to Luka. You've also got guys like Josh Green, who projects to be a promising defensive wing, not really someone you should count on to be one of your main offensive options. The shot is a question, his handle's kind of average, his playmaking isn't that great. There is a chance that Tyrell Terry turns into that. He showed a lot of offensive prowess in college, but he's also only 6'2", 170 pounds, and he hasn't really played many minutes this season. So while you do have a couple of options that you could look for in the future, I personally think that you need something more for the right now. I think with Luka, this team easily can be a championship contender if KP is healthy and you put one more perimeter player with Luka. I do think they're missing Seth Curry a bit right now because outside of Kleber, Burke, and Hardaway, nobody is shooting higher than 32% from three, which I'm sure at some point will change. At least hopefully it will for the sake of the Mavs. Obviously, they've also been missing several guys for a few games as well due to the health and safety protocols. So this whole thing might be a bit of an overreaction, like I said earlier. But it's not like any of the guys that they've been missing are some great offensive talent. But let's actually get into the guys that I personally think the Mavs should go after. The first person I really think of when I think of the Mavs trading for someone is Kyle Lowry. The Raptors are having a down year currently, and Lowry is pretty much the face of the franchise and has been for years. But I don't think there's a guarantee that he stays at the end of the year in Toronto. He'd be a really good fit next to Luka for multiple reasons, one of them being he's a very good defensive guard. Luka hasn't been bad defensively this year, but I think you'd still rather have a great defensive guard to take on the tougher matchup. He can also handle the point guard duties whenever Luka is off the court, or even on. I'm a big fan of staggering minutes as I'm pretty sure everyone is, and the playmaking definitely takes a big hit whenever Luka goes to the bench. This could also get Luka going a lot more on catch and shoot looks, which in turn should help his three point percentage. All around, I just think it would help this Mavs team a lot offensively and defensively. But what exactly would a trade for Lowry look like though? There's probably a few combos that you could go with. I'm fairly certain all of them have to involve one of James Johnson and Tim Hardaway Jr. This trade that I made is kind of just one that I threw together. Obviously, there's more valuable players that you could put in this trade like Dwight Powell or Richardson, along with the young guys like Josh Green and Tyrell Terry, maybe Jalen Brunson if you feel like it. So don't kill me if you don't like this one. As you can see, it's Tim Hardaway Jr., James Johnson, and the Mavs 2025 first round pick. Pretty sure 2025 is the earliest that they can trade a first, but I definitely could be wrong because the protections are kind of confusing, so let me know if it's something different. Obviously, like I said earlier, you can throw in Josh Green or whoever you want. This is just what I picked. Obviously, it's not really that much value for Kyle Lowry, so you probably want to throw in maybe Josh Richardson or probably Dwight Powell, actually, because Toronto kind of needs a center. So, like I said, there's plenty of combos that you could pick. This is just the one that I put together. 
There is one more perimeter player I want to talk about before we end the video, and that's Zach Levine. I know Bulls fans have come to love this guy, and it's for a very good reason. He's an absolute monster on the offensive end. He's one of the most potent perimeter scorers in the NBA right now. He's absolutely lethal going to the rim. He can finish through you, around you, over you, any way you like. The athleticism could make for some really awesome fast breaks and lobs from Luka. And he's not just a high flyer. He's also become a very good three-point shooter. He's currently shooting 38% on nine attempts per game from three. And playing with Luka would definitely get him some open looks. Defensively, there's a lot to be desired. On the ball, he's solid at times, but off ball, he's pretty bad. So while he isn't exactly a great fit defensively, Luka isn't a bad defender, so they should be fine. As for the trade that I put together, this might not be enough for the Bulls, but I put Hardaway Jr., Josh Green, and the 2025 first rounder. The Bulls get a solid young guard as well as a future draft pick, and Hardaway Jr. can somewhat replace the scoring Levine provides. I'm not sure how much longer Levine will be in Chicago anyway, considering he'll be demanding a pretty big contract next offseason. There's a chance that the Bulls give it to him, and maybe the Mavs need to give up two first-round picks. Three would be pushing it for me, but um, you never know what the Bulls could demand or what they would have to give up. But those are two perimeter players I think the Mavs should go look into trading for. And even though they might not be considered stars, I think they're really good players who could definitely help take this team to the next level. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. And y'all have a good one.